I felt like this was Art Simone's win. Period. Robbed. It's a new day in the workroom and I am tired. <laughs> it's a crazy thing with the time difference in Australia to in Canada. I know, the UK, it's a different time zone as well, but it's like another ball game and it's a whole different time of morning. I have to be doing these reactions. So let's get right up into this. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under will receive a one year supply of Revolution Beauty Cosmetics and a cash prize of $30,000. So the girls win $30,000. Stunning! <laughs> I mean, that's a start. That is a start. It's way better than winning a freaking badge. You have to admit, I love that for them. I've already reacted to their entrance outfits from a last video when I did the reveal thing, so let's just get to know these girls. Well, I'm not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> My name is Art Simone. I'm a fabulous professional drag queen from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> right away, I just have to ask and say this because maybe I'm just the only one noticing, and if that's the case, then I'm just too observant or my ears don't work properly. And that's fine. Uh, does it sound weird to you listening to them talk in the confessional room? Because in the, con I, lo I love our confessional by the way, but in the confessional, the audio sounds a little crunchy. Like you're in a big, a big room with nothing for the sound to bounce off of. It sounds like it was recording on a, recorded on something that's not great. So that's odd for me. What the bloody hell's going on around here? Come on, season queen, 46 and fabulous. <laughs> Maxi Shields, uh, her entrance line gives me very campy queen, so I'm looking for the funny from you. But the pillows, ladies, mama's a hoe and she's going in dry. <laughs> Jojo's a hoe? I love your entrance line. You're a naughty girl. <laughs> Yay! A lot of people are talking online about will there be First Nations queens or will there not be? Jojo just uh, told us she is a First Nation and we can all like stop speculating. If you're not from Australia, if you are from Australia, you probably already knew this. I don't know who that is. I was a model before the accident. I don't know who's more parched, me or a wig. <laughs> okay, the shade has officially begun. Um, Electra Shock, she came in, her little ex ex uh, entrance line was cute, but these girls are shady AF. Dry wig brigade, like what? I don't even know what to think. It reminds me of such like an older season of Drag Race where no one cares and you're just like reading each other for filth and you're not worried about what you guys at home are gonna think because it's drag and it's fun and they read people. I'm here for it. Oh my God, it's so adorable. Not her saying she's expensive and pretty and dry and the girls are like her wig is dry and who the fuck is this? <laughs> Who's ready to paint the town Scarlet? I like Scarlet's entrance line, but she is, is it me or does she look just like Aquaria walking into season 10? I'm trying to stop. I have a problem. Good gay girly god, you guys. This is what the bus is about. <laughs> Sorry, I lied, Sydney. Coco Jumbo is stunning. She's such a beautiful queen. Like, in the face? Are you kidding me? Didn't really get what her entrance line was saying. I think it's some. Maybe the accent just lost me, but I was laughing. I was enjoying her. Just looking at her was a spectacle. How delightfully can. Kid Amin walked in letting you know I'm camp. <laughs> and she looks great. You can't kill a cockroach. Why is she a cockroach? <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Are you obsessed with cockroaches? Because I'm not. But you're looking stunning. It's time to wiggle it! Oh no! Honestly. And in walks in Anita Wiglet. I guess uh, Kinamine has her twin with her this season. I love when Drag Race does it, by the way. It was like the same thing with Alyssa Edwards and Coco Montrese. It's like if you are like known as a duo outside of the competition or like rivals or whatever, you have history. They try to get the, t the same girls on the same season. I can't wait to see how this turns out. 
I can't see this mark anywhere. Pretty <laughs> dollars is way up near the front. Looks like we're gonna need a bigger locker for this hat. I'm just gonna let you know right away. I did not hear one thing Karen from Binance said. I probably had to rewind it. <laughs> a lot of the times when these girls are talking, I have to be like, uh? But they seem to be having fun, so I'm having fun. Scream that creature out of your body. <laughs> the tip is still in there. <laughs> the mini challenge is really cute. Everyone is doing a little screen test thing. Uh, the guy who was like the director of the Avengers, really cute. <laughs> but anyways, I love the mini challenge. I love who they chose for the winner. I feel like Electra was the funniest of them all. I know, the underdog. I was more I was more engaged when she was doing it for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it was a screaming that got to me. This week's maxi challenge is going to be a ball. Yes, I love when a ball is like the first thing they do because you get to see a lot of looks from them. You get to see a lot of personality through the runway and so a lot of girls, they bring all these looks and they don't get to wear them all if they get eliminated early. At least this way, they get to show at least multiple looks on the first day. Now, this ball is a get to know you ball. We're gonna be seeing a born naked uh, runway and a hometown runway. And I cannot wait to see how this turns out. We moved around a lot. You know, I've lived on a, a mission in WA for like 12 months. What's the mission? The best way to describe it was like back in the day, it was like a concentration camp for black people. Wow. JoJo's talking like, you know, as they do, and she's like really going into the history of Australia. And I know a little bit of the Australian history and how Australia came to be like a, col a whole country and colonized and how the British got there. But like the missions um, that she lived in as a kid growing up, before her, it would be like concentration camps for black people and they weren't even allowed to go into the city, the, the towns with everyone else. And it's really interesting to learn, um, you know, the history of this country. When you've spent 33 years of your life being that person, your mind just doesn't shift straight away. I've still got a journey to go on. Kidamine was overweight in the past. She did a whole gastric bypass surgery and that's amazing. Uh, if you there's something like, you know, something about you that you're not comfortable with that's hindering you, like, I can't wait to see her naked runway. I just can't wait to see it. I want to see her be confident now. I want to see her prance around that stage and just be sickening because she is sickening. She was sickening, but now she feels better about herself. So she's even more sickening. No! We're putting the costume on and the unthinkable happens. Oh my God, I would die. Scarlett's outfit literally tore apart while putting it on. And it's a sickening outfit. It looks really expensive. It's a whole bodysuit. You know, people always have the prosthetic boobs and stuff, like Katya buys them a lot, but this is like a whole body. You just put it on and it's like skin. Kind of weird, but kind of really interesting. What the hell is she gonna do? Head to toe, let your whole body talk. RuPaul looks cute. I love the black dress. I love the big brooch. Yeah. And our extra special guest judge is... RuPaul! What is going on here? Why is RuPaul sitting behind the desk in no RuPaul geesh? And then do this weird thing where RuPaul as the drag queen sits in a court? I hate this. Hate it. All right, I'm gonna get over it. Let's get into these looks. Dragulish category you know is born naked. <laughs> Scarlett Adams. Okay, born naked and the rest is drag. She is, everything's showing. There's no censoring around the nipples, around the JJ. There's, everything's out there for your consumption. That's kind of sickening. This is kind of sickening. The season seven girls wore naked runway could never. <laughs> okay, Maxi, I like the outfit. I like the hair, the makeup, the jewels. Everything's really cute, but I'm not seeing a lot of naked. I can see your titties, <laughs> you know, through the fabric, but I can see also panties through it. And you never opened up the coat, so 
let me see them goodies. I like this a lot. And again, she said it's a nod to RuPaul's old look. Electroshock looks great. The body's right. She did it in her own way. I'm into this. It's not a bad look at all. I get the concept that she's going for, you know, like, yeah, it's conceptualized. It's something. It's fashion. It's whatever. But I don't love it, Coco. I don't love it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's and it's campy and it's for somebody. It's just not for me. I personally don't love it, but I get where you're going with it. Does that make sense to you? Okay, um, she's going for this non-binary statement thing. I didn't get it at first. I was just like, is it post-apocalyptic? Cause it looks like blood and stuff. But I think I saw one of the boobs cut off, etc., etc. Interesting look, real interesting. Jojo as a hoe comes in. Uh, I love the bush. Free the bush. <laughs> uh, I love the fact that she is doing the na like the hair, the braids, the feathers. I'm into it. I get it. I know the reference, and I actually find it interesting and funny and just very good. Like I know what she's going for, and I get it. I get it. I get it. Karen from finance. She's a smart queen. She came in with reveals and the carpet matches the drapes. It's great. Eve from Adam and Eve. Uh, like it's one of those throw, one of those things where it's instantly recognizable. It's been done a billion times. It is referential. You can't really mess it up, and she didn't mess it up. It's fine. All right. I like Kita. I think she's such a fun girl and I like her. Let, let me just say that first. This was not made perfectly for your body. You have a brand new body, your body is banging, and I'm seeing a lot of gathering on the fabric. It needed to be like skin tight, but I don't know what was going on there. So, and the balls hanging off, I don't know what it's for. Is it just for fun? I don't get it. I don't understand, it's cute, the balls on it, but it's like, why? And why is it not fitting you the way it's supposed to fit you? Like, come on. I love Art Simone's look, love it. Love, 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 love it. It's beautiful, it's stunning, there's not a hair out of place, you cannot clock it. It's born naked, she's not fully naked. You can ding her for that if you want to, but the concept is just brilliant. Category is no place like home. Scarlett Adams representing Perth, honey, Perth. Walk into the room. Y'all can't even spell Perth. All right, I don't know much about any of these different parts of Australia, and I cannot say whether or not it is specific to these areas. I just have to be like, that's what you're serving, so it must be what your area gives. I'm just gonna be telling you whether or not I like it. <laughs> And this, I like. <laughs> Scarlett's look is really fun, it's cute. The feathers, I get, I see the, the hand, the peak, like it's beautiful. It's well done, you can tell it's not a cheap look. And so work. I love this color. I really love this color, I love the outfit. All I would have wanted was for the bottom half of this dress to have more fabric so that it comes out more. It looks a little droopy and sad at the bottom. If it had more tulle, like that fabric looks too heavy and it's not light enough. It's She needed more volume at the bottom. But apart from that, it's a really fun look. All right, Electra, I like you. I like you and I think you have the makings of a stunning, formidable queen. However, I don't know the significance of the coat and I don't, and that's not what I'm trying to say here. If it's significant, it's significant. I wish it was bigger. I wish this was a coat that was on the floor. I wanted it to be dragging because when it's like a little capelet, it's giving me very, I borrowed this from my little cousin. Like it's not it. With all this fabric you have flowing, the coat should have been the thing that was touching the floor. Coco Jumbo's look was interesting. It, she said that her play, her town is known for like the big banana and so she decided to go for like a King Kong look because King Kong loves bananas. And I'm like, that's an interesting way to think about it. 
that's a really interesting way to think about it. The outfit wasn't bad in itself. It's just that it was all black, so it's really monochromatic. Maybe if there were some different colors in there, like making it a silver belly, you know, like making something else give you to give you more definition in the waist. Maybe oh, glitter the glitter the abs of King Kong and like make it stone it in like white or whatever. I don't know what, what how to explain it to you, but it just needed more dimension to this outfit to give her more of a fabulous shape. It looked totally fine, but it could have been way better. I think I'm losing it, I'm losing myself. Long story short, could have been better. Et cetera, et cetera, it might be the youngest girl in the competition, but she is definitely not a broke bitch because she looks expensive and she looks amazing. She is really polished for being one of the younger queens. All right, Jojo, you better work. I love the outfit. I love that she's giving you the, you know, Marie Antoinette thing. We all know about colonization and that's what she was giving and then boom. I love it. We get it. I love it. I love it. You love it. This is a very interesting look from Karen. She's going for a straight white woman that's drunk and she looks like one. I don't love the look and I don't hate it. It's like, yeah, it was a look. I love this look by Anita. I love this uh, sheep look. It's so good. It's fashion. It's really, really well done. Like she's a campy queen, but she's a campy queen that has taste. And that's not easy to find. Hina looks pretty good. Like I like the outfit. It's a representative of where she's from. It's well made. It doesn't look cheap. It's a cool outfit. I love this look from Art Simone. I would have preferred if she just came out in the reveal alone and not do the first thing that she did because I was beginning for a minute. I was literally like, what the hell is going on here and why am I seeing this? But I love this print. It's beautiful. It's everything. So I agreed with a lot of what the judges had to say about uh, some of the girls in the top and the bottom. I have a very strong feeling that they want to give it to Karen from Finance this week. I hope not because I found other girls to be, have been better. But I really feel like Electra and possibly Jojo might be in trouble for the lip sync. Karen from Finance. Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. RuPaul is so freaking predictable, it's really bugging me sometimes. Like, it bugs me, it bugs me. She will always go for the queen that looks like freaking what a Karen from Finance, like Sherry Pie from that past season. You could tell if Sherry Pie didn't do all that mess and got canceled, she would have won that whole freaking show because that's the type of queen RuPaul loves when they look exactly like how they look and they are campy and just like old 45 year old middle-aged white women who are very like, oh, oh, oh. I did not think she deserved to win. No. I felt like this was Art Simone's win. Period. Robbed. Electra and Jojo, I'm sorry my dears, but you are up for elimination. This lip sync was a hot mess between Electra and Zozo and Jojo. <laughs> um, Electra was just like doing the most, splitting all over the place, doing kicks and all of that. Jojo seemed like really dead in the face, like she was really upset and couldn't get over it. At the end of the day, Electra won. Jojo went home. Sorry to see you go, babes, but you came and you told a really important story about the history of Australia and your people. You represented them on the runway. Uh, everything might have not been as polished to the liking of the Drag Race fandom or the judges or whatever, but you did come and you did do what you needed to do. And I'm proud of you for that. All in all, this episode was pretty interesting. Um, the audio was a little crunch in some parts. The girls, the, the girls themselves, the cast, I love them because they are so authentic authentic i was saying the word and it's like it wasn't coming out they're so authentic they are so like real it just makes me feel like they don't care that their camera's on them they're not worried about any outside view of who they are and what they should be they're like i am this and i want to say that so i'm just gonna be me and say what the hell i want to say and be damned with the consequences of you heifers online 
behind your keyboards, you know? I love that about them. As far as the judging goes, it was like, mm, I, agree with, I agreed with some of it. I didn't agree with others. And RuPaul not being in full drag for the main stage, I'm like, you're trash. With love. <laughs> but that was so like, as a viewer, I did not enjoy that. I was like, really? Insert Jasmine Masters saying, if you can't do your own makeup, you're not doing drag. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share if you care, and go over to my Patreon where I have a bunch of exclusive content. And bye. Hey, beautiful humans. I have so much more content. Come on, watch my shit. <laughs>